Fraud is obviously not only an issue for governments. Taking four recent cases as examples, Camilla Barling, who has studied fraud-related issues and is currently doing a traineeship at the ECA, has been looking into fraud in the private sector in Europe. So in this video, we are going to tell you about the biggest scams in Europe's history. The video is going to be amazing, so make sure you stick to the end. Before starting the video, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to never miss out on any of our videos. The selected cases represent different types of fraud and involve various political, financial, and business actors from across the continent. There are many reasons for persistence in the fight against fraud and corruption. They undermine democracy and cost a lot of money, ranging between 179 and 990 billion euros per year for the EU alone. But apart from this, and perhaps even worse, fraud erodes public trust. Robust and effective oversight mechanisms are the government's main weapon against fraud. But sometimes, unfortunately, weaknesses in these mechanisms can also be the cause of fraud. Detecting and properly sanctioning these wrongdoings is not an easy task, as every measure put in place to tackle and prevent fraudulent activities might create new loopholes. To make matters worse, globalization adds to this complexity, for example, because of difficult cross-border litigation. Fraud is not only an issue for governments and the public sector. It affects a broad range of industries, comes in many shades, and can involve many different actors. Below I focused on four different cases, known to the general public for reasons of size, characteristics, political consequences, or direct impact on people's lives. According to Transparency International, Denmark is one of the least corrupt countries in the world. It has gained international recognition for its outstanding governability, healthy economy, and high living standards. Surveys show that Danes are among the happiest people in the world, something experts like to attribute to a secret ingredient, trust. For these reasons, Denmark is probably not the first country that springs to mind when you think about fraud. Even so, the country has faced a series of money laundering scandals within its banking system in recent years, suggesting weaknesses in the Danish oversight mechanisms. Since 2015, two big Scandinavian banks, Danske Bank and Nordea, have been mentioned in connection with national and international investigations into illegal transactions. Allegedly, the banks were involved in different international money laundering schemes that systematically overlooked suspicious payments in specific Danish and Estonian branches. Knowing your customer was an important issue and a moving target. Up to this time, some 200 billion euros in payments had flowed through the non-resident portfolio of Danske Bank's Estonian branch between 2007 and 2015. In the case of Nordea, the Financial Times estimates that around 700 million euros in suspicious money flowed from Russia and former Soviet states through the bank from 2005 to 2017. In terms of effectively managing the anti-money laundering risks, both banks seem to have made some serious mistakes. One key problem, who was responsible for external supervision? While Danske Bank is Danish, the suspicious activities occurred in the bank's Estonian branch, and that context differs significantly from the Danish one. Thus, it was not clear to either the Danish or the Estonian banking supervision authorities who would or should report the detected inconsistencies to agencies with sanctioning power. The cross-border nature of the case limited cooperation and distorted oversight mechanisms, which blurred the question of final responsibility. A similar logic applies in the case of Nordea, which does business in Denmark, Sweden, and Finland. The challenge posed by cross-border supervision increased when Nordea reorganized from a subsidiary structure into a branch structure, after which it moved its legal headquarters from Sweden to Finland, a member of the European Banking Union in 2018. The main problem in these situations is that it only takes money launderers a couple of seconds to complete transactions through banks in multiple countries, while it takes law enforcement years or even decades to unravel the money flow and adjust legislation accordingly. In reaction to the scandals and the announcement of a general election, Danish lawmakers have recently agreed to strengthen financial crime-fighting efforts by granting the Danish Financial Supervisory Authority, FSA, more resources. Danske Bank and Nordea have felt the distrust of investors and customers. Shares have fallen and customers have left. In 2014, 
Portugal was startled by an international scheme of influence peddling, embezzlement, tax evasion, illegal campaign funds, and corruption involving actors from all walks of life and sectors of society in mainly Portugal and Brazil. The scheme revolved around public officials, up to the highest level of government, rewarding construction companies with state tender contracts, and around the selling, buying, and merging of state-slash-privately owned telecommunication companies. A big Portuguese financial institution funneled and laundered money from Portugal and Brazil, which eventually led to the collapse of the bank in question, Banco Espírito Santo BES. Millions of clients were left penniless, and the popular saying, Follow the money led investigators to European, Latin American, and African countries. Let us know your opinion in the comment section below. This was all for today. Hope you liked the video. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay safe, and we will be back soon with another video.